today we're going to be looking at the Triggler. Triggler is a part of Combat Utility Belt module, and it can be used to set up triggers in your game. This will put into place a status effect or execute a macro when the conditions are met, such as having HP being equal to zero, or AC being a number, or having a certain number of currency. The most useful of which out of all of these I find to be HP, we'll be getting into that all today. We'll cover the basic use cases such as setting bloodied, setting unconscious or dead, as well as we'll even touch on how you can automatically transition an actor into a loot sheet. All of this will be going through, but we do need to have a certain number of models in place. We need to have the furnace, midi kill well, combat utility belt module, token magic, as well as loot sheet for the automatic loot sheet conversion. Okay, let's go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Trigger and create all of the triggers we will use later on. It is very easy to make a trigger. All you need to do is select what attribute or ability or detail or trait you want to set. The most common one will be HP, which is what I use for all of my triggers right now. And value equals what the HP is equal to at that time. So if they have 20 out of 50, the value is 20. Equals the number. And then property 2, you use this for percentages, like less than 50% of max, which we can see right here. Attribute HP, value less than 50% of the max. Pretty simple. The only thing to note is for the triggers, you can use either PC or NPC or have the property not equal to zero. So if you want only for PCs, you can check this box. Only for NPCs, check that box. Make sure though, if you want it to affect both, you leave both of them unchecked. All right, after you've set up all of your triggers, these are what mine look like. We can go ahead and open up the condition lab next. So here we are in the condition lab. The first thing I did was I changed my unconscious triggers. I apply the unconscious condition if my value of a PC equals zero, and I remove it if they gain any HP at all so that they are greater than zero, not zero. This is for PCs only because in my game, unless I have a very special use case, a special NPC, whenever an NPC hits zero, they just die. They don't have to do death saving throws. So we have here dead attributes HP value equals zero NPCs only and I really don't need a remove condition but I set up so you can see attributes HP value greater than zero NPCs only not zero so if an NPC gains any HP when they're at zero the dead condition will be removed and at the very bottom I have bloody this will be for both PCs and NPCs if their HP drops below 50% we have attributes HP max they will be bloodied and then if they are greater than or equal to 50% of their max the bloody condition is removed pretty simple to set this up however I want to do more than this I want to add in token effects as well so let's go through how we can set those up and match them up with the conditions we'll be using most of the time it's pretty simple to add in token magic effects we just use macro .token magic custom and then type in the name of the effect which there is a long list right here on DAE. However, I want to use the effect bloody and the effect dead, or I should say wound and dead. Here we can see dead on the baboon and bloody wound on Merrick. To do this, we need to import the token magic effect first from the compendium. And then after we've imported it, we're going to change things around a little bit. After we've imported the effect that we want to use, this is an effect that is not on the default menu, we are going to change the last line of text in the macro. So we're going to delete this line, and we're going to add in a line that looks like this. Token magic dot add preset parenthesis. And then quotation marks, this is the name. Whatever name you type in here between the quotation marks is the name that will appear on the menu. So if you want it to be bloody, type in bloody. If you want to be something else like wound, type that in. Whatever name you have there is what is going to appear on the menu. And then comma, params, close parenthesis, semicolon. So it will look like this. And then after you have it all set up, you just save and then execute. And what this will do is it will add it onto your list. So we can go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I will go ahead and skip 
showing off how I added in the dead effect as well because it's the same step. So we can see here where it wasn't there before, bloody has now appeared and has been added to my list of preset effects. So back to the condition lab, I'm going to open up my effects tab, type in macro.tokenmagic, capital M, custom, bloody, as I had it there. If you have a different name, make sure that it matches whatever name you added into your preset list. And then I'll just hit submit changes and I'll go do the same thing for dead. And here we can see what it looks like for dead. I did change my icon, but everything else is the same. Macro.tokenmagic, custom, dead, submit changes, and then you can set up unconscious the triggers, but I did not make any changes as far as the effects go for unconscious. So everything is good here. Let's go take a look at how this appears when we are in combat. So here's our scene. We have Merrick, which is controlled by player two. So it is a PC and we have an acolyte that is an NPC. So Merrick is going to hit the acolyte and let's see what happens. And attack comes in, it hits and we see the acolyte is bloodied and the bloody effect goes on top. Let's go in for another hit. And the acolyte is dead and we see the blood splash has appeared. The final thing we are going to cover in this video is looking at this hobgoblin. The hobgoblin has a long sword, a long bow, chain mail, and shield. And a lot of times my players will want to take everything off of the, well, the monsters or the villains that they kill. And it can be kind of difficult to keep track of all these individual sets of armor. There is an easy way that we can set this up using Triggler and a loot macro. The macro we'll be using was developed by CCJMK and Honey Badger. And what it'll do is it'll take any NPC that is defeated, an NPC at zero HP, and it'll automatically convert that NPC into a loot sheet, meaning the player can take that chain mail, that long sword, all of those things off of them. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below to where you can find this, as well as giving credit to those that work so hard on it. But let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. I've named mine loot and just copied and pasted all of this in set it to script, execute macro as GM, and then save. And then next, I need to go into my condition lab. And next to the dead status, I'm going to add in a new effect. So we can go to dead here. Uh, at the very bottom, active effects, effects, add a new effect. And we're going to add in macro.execute, custom. And then whenever you have named the macro you brought in, mine is named loot, so I'll name it loot. And then I hit submit changes and save mapping and let's test it out. I'm going to hit this hobgoblin. So we should still see the bloody stats appear. And we see the dead stats appear right there all at once. We're going to now, if it worked, we should be able to click on the hobgoblin and where it was a character sheet before, now it should be a loot sheet. And we can see right there, there's the loot sheet. And as the player, I can take the items. I can take the longbow, the longsword, the chainmail, the shield. Now just to make sure that everything is working as intended, we're going to jump over to the player's side and make sure the player can take all of the items from this loot sheet. Here is the player's view. As the player, I'm going to click on the dead hobgoblin and then take this longbow and then take the longsword and then the chainmail and the shield. And if I look at my character sheet and go to inventory, I will see all of those things have been added on. My inventory is a little bit messy, but everything was added on. Oh, there's the chain meal and the shield right there. So it works as intended. Okay, that's where we're gonna end things today. There are some other things you could use the trigger for, but I think these are probably the most common use cases. As I mentioned earlier, I'll put everything down in the description below as far as the macro and my setup. And if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Thanks everyone.